So we'll move on to our next presenter here, uh, which is Margaret Brody, interim CEO and CFO of Rubicon Organics. Uh, as a licensed producer of cannabis, Rubicon has taken a very unique approach to the cannabis market by prioritizing premium quality, organically grown BC bud. It has done an excellent job communicating its value proposition to consumers with its products commanding a premium price points, even relative to other premium brands. And it regularly sells out of all of its current production. Last quarter showed sales up more than 70% year over year, a pace that far out, a pace that far exceeded industry growth, a surprising statistic given that most other operators have pointed to value price products taking share. So with that, I'll turn the call over to Margaret to tell us more about our Rubicon, how you've managed to build a premium brand in a market where many others have struggled to do so. Please go ahead. Rubicon Organics is um the industry leader in premium organic cannabis. Uh, my name is Margaret Brody. I'm the interim CEO and CFO of the company. I've been with Rubicon since its inception, um, which is uh, eight years actually. Um, my background is uh, I was a competitive athlete and a rower uh, with 5 a.m. mornings for eight years. I'm a CPA with KPMG for almost 10 years where I spent over six years of that time after I got qualified in London, England, working on global accounts. I then moved into the mining sector in Canada for five years and onto cannabis in 2015, probably pretty early days um, compared to a lot. Uh, when I saw the opportunity and was really passionate about being able to build a new business and a new industry in Canada. What you can see here is our, our standard disclaimer and I forward looking statements, et cetera, et cetera. So please read with detail. Rubicon Organics is a leader in the Canadian cannabis sector with our premium and super premium brands. We have been established as a great BC cannabis company, and we are very proud to be taking our famous BC world, BC weed to the world. We have delivered four consecutive quarters of adjusted EBITDA profitability and three consecutive quarters of positive operating cash flow. We did this all through our three brands, Simply Bear Organic, our super premium uh, flower first products, 1964 Supply Co., our premium flower first cannabis products, and Wildflower, our topical and wellness focused brand, where we deliver consistent, high quality organic certified products that are recognized and winning with consumers. Rubicon has executed on building two of the strongest premium flower brands in Canada, in arguably the hardest segment premium flower delivered through the quality of our operations and our people. From a BC weed story perspective, for those of you who are unaware, there are four places that have true cannabis heritage. Jamaica for the culture and Bob Marley, California, its cultivation, its influence and its trends, the Netherlands for its open coffee shops and BC where the draft dodgers came from the past and established the lore of BC weed. Any weed consumer in the world knows the power and strength of BC weed and its legacy from the small communities and groups that established medical marijuana in Canada. BC Bud is to Canada what California weed is to the US. And we as Rubicon embrace and respect the legacy cannabis culture and market. We have a team mixed from those who grew up in the traditional professions to those from the legacy market who are getting their first mortgage eligibility with us and tax paying jobs. Um, our team with legacy roots are always watching current trends, what West Coast legacy market trends, and they really know what great weed is and we stand for it. I am proud that our interdisciplinary team works together to help consumers understand what premium weed is and should look like. And it's not just what the package said, but the quality of what is inside drives the brand promise. Now, a few themes you're gonna hear from me today. Rubicon is leading in premium and super premium brands and they are recognized and winning based on our execution, proprietary organic methodology and quality of what we do. These brands are becoming some of the very few longstanding premium brands on shelf here in Canada, and there is considerable room to use the competitive advantage of our brand value to expand these, expand these strong brands. We play in the profitable premium segment where the 80-20 rule applies. It may be 80% of the market sells mainstream or value products, but most of the profitability sits in the premium market being around 20% of the market and all our products deliver gross margin and we have no loss leaders. 
Our execution has been key and we have used our second mover advantage to watch the mistakes of others and not get over our skis on costs. We focus on two things, quality and the consumer who cares about it and our people and our team who I'm proud to work with every day. They have passion for the quality and delivery to our customers. The Canadian market is growing considerably and within the premium category is actually growing even faster. The opportunity for growth still exists in cannabis, especially for companies like Rubicon with a strong established brand presence that we can now build upon. In addition, in this next phase of the Canadian market, weak operators are falling out of the market or being consolidated at bargain prices. And our last point is our brands are built, recommended, and we are ready for growth. The table is set for, for us to lever off of to build a larger business. We have laid the foundation with our brands, our execution, to build the BC Bud leader in Canada, and we aspire to be the Lululemon of weed. A few of our fundamentals are here. We have over 2% market share. Most recently, I just saw a stat at 2.3%. More meaningfully, we have over 5% of the premium market, which as I said before, was the most profitable and sticky on price. Our facility is located in Delta, BC and produces consistent premium quality organic certified products due to our proprietary methodologies and strong operational execution. Our brands are located um, in the key provinces of Quebec, Ontario, Alberta, and our home in BC, and we cover 97% of the addressable Canadian market. We are also tightly held with 43% insider ownership and consistent insider buying. This is an exciting slide for me to present. In the early part of 23, Brightfield studied bud trenders across Canada, and we were very proud to see in those results that two of our brands were recommended in the top three. Our super premium Simply Bear Organic and our premium 1964 Supply Co. held the two of the top three spots. This is a discerning and very influential group when all products are behind glass and a conversation with bud tenders is required to purchase a product in Canadian stores. Furthermore, the 1964 brand was only launched nationally in 22, and in April this year, reached the number one ranked premium brand in the country. The trajectory of our brands and their good reputation means we're ready for further growth. Not just flower, um, but we have other categories as well, and our wildflower brand has become Canada's favorite topical product. We wholly own the brand and is the number one topical in Canada with over 17% market share. The product is sitting in that comfortable premium entry point product for those not ready to ingest, but looking for the benefits of CBD wellness. Wildflower has given Rubicon a strong platform to grow the brand and new product formats and categories. So Rubicon was not the first LP to come to market, but we have lot, learned a lot from watching under, others and understand that operational execution and processes are key to success. We aim at being the leading premium cannabis company in Canada through our competitive advantages. We cultivate organically certified uh, living soil in, in, in living soil, which provides a more flavorful and terpene rich flower, which consumers love. We drop new strains regularly and are monitoring legacy market trends to deliver new news to our brands, very similar to the cookie strategy in the US. We have brand awareness and foundation set for expansion with more profitable product formats. Given our capacity we constraint, we can focus on selling our most profitable products from our Delta facility. We also, as I mentioned, have support of the cannabis community with bud tenders recommending us in two of their top threes. Um, we also have won a series of awards, and just two of them are shown here. We recently won BC's AR Cannabis Cup in 23, where our Simply Bare Organic Oil Tanker won Best Gas, to the Kind Awards in December 22, where 1964 won, and our Comatose Strain won Indica of the Year, very high honor. I'm also very proud how quickly 1964 has reached number one in Canada and as, a, as a premium brand. And I believe that was built off the brand strength that we built with Simply Bear. It is an example of what we mean by we say the bud tender matters in Canada. When Simply Bear launched a secondary brand, bud tenders knew to trust the Simply Bear company quality. Our success has been driven by exceptional products, customer centric approach and strong operational execution. So what is our magic sauce? Our products benefit from the power of the sun with the protection of an indoor greenhouse environment. We use our organic certified proprietary methods with our BC living soil, together with craft processes to bring a hand-trimmed, hand-packaged product delivered with care to our customers. 
And that caring shows up in what the bud tender and consumer feel when they receive our product. This is about operational process and people to build consistency. Many of you would have seen the ups and downs in brands and cannabis industry reminding you that in Canada, you cannot see through the product when it's purchased. The early days, large er, early LPs built nice looking brands, but had terrible weed inside, meaning the consumer didn't get their first moment of truth. Instead, they were disappointed and left the brand. What we are building is consistency. When you pick up a Rubicon product, you know it's going to be great. We believe that great product quality is the foundation for building strong brands with longevity in Canada. Rubicon has built a good, better, best strategy for our brands. Even better, every product we sell is profitable and targets a different group. So I've talked about the buzz around our brands, but here's what they do. Simply Bear Organic is our super premium and organic certified flavor focused unique genetics with regular new drops targeting the knowledgeable and discerning cannabis connoisseur. 1964 is focused on recruiting legacy consumers by offering classic organic cultivars. Now we cultivate for Simply Bear in 1964, but we have an outlet for our product that does not live up to the quality that does not live up to the quality and that goes into Homestead. This product is only available when it comes up and has become a recruiter into our other brands for the budget conscious consumer who appreciates quality. As you also saw, we have built an own premium and best-selling topical nationally with our wildflower brand, and you will see us extend our products across this brand, beginning to build the wellness category in Canada. We believe this market has huge potential for growth. And um, since we currently sell of our, all of our product and our capacity constraint, I'm going to speak more to our growth opportunities later. About our infrastructure to deliver what we do. We started with the right size facility. We didn't overbuild. We have 125,000 square feet of, with annual production capacity around 11,000 kilos on a 100% owned 20 acre property in Delta, British Columbia, which is an agricultural district, which means we have easy access to agricultural labor forces. It's also 20 minutes from the Vancouver airport. Our facility is organically certified, which means our plants and product flavors benefit from living soil and a larger expression of terpenes or flavors in our flower. We have a premium hang dry and cure process to make sure that the great flower we cultivate is processed with care and we deliver a consistent premium quality flower. The benefit of this facility is that we deliver indoor quality with greenhouse costs. And the proof of all of this is in our inventory loss numbers. You can see right in our financial statements, we have industry low inventory loss rates. I wanna take a moment to say what I pound into our people every day, um, which is our four priorities for driving profitability in 23. The first is we are in endless pursuit of optimizing yield and improving our quality. That will be in the top left-hand corner of this page forever in our lifetime. We believe we can always get better. Secondly, it's to maximize the Canadian premium opportunity. For every gram we have, we wanna look at how do we maximize the gross profit associated with that. In addition, we've launched products that do not take capacity from our facility, such as our recent launch of 1964 edibles. We're also driving efficiency in processes and systems and institutionalizing for growth, such as onboarding an ERP system, and then we focus on our people. And I've talked about quality, but the other secret sauce is people. Because we are in a premium business, the love for what we do is critical. And every member of the team needs to care about the product getting properly into customers' hands. Here's a summary of our financial journey for the PL and cash flow. Against a backdrop of other Canadian companies, we have achieved consistent positive trajectory of revenue growth profitability, and positive cash flow, and in 2022, for the first time, delivered both positive operating cash flow and adjusted EBITDA profitability. Despite the impacts of dry January and seasonally down Q1, we continued our profitability trend in 23 thus far, and I would note our adjusted EBITDA calculation is very clean. It only adds back the fair values of our cannabis plants um, and share-based payment, not inventory losses, R&D, or other types of costs. In Canada, we are one of a handful of companies that have demonstrated consistent growth 
without costs out of control. And we watch our costs very carefully. We monitor budget to actual reviews with each department every month to make sure the business has limited surprises. We are the right size to deliver continued profitability cash flow, especially as we continue to see industry changes. In the last 12 months, we have seen consistent 12 month rolling growth and a 68% increase in revenue and over 300% increase in our gross profit before those non-cash fair value adjustments. You will see shortly the growth in the premium market and we are outpacing that with our revenue. With our most recent Q1 results, you can see our results dip down with the seasonal impacts of dry January, but we have maintained profitability and set ourselves up to deliver in 23. You can see here, as with others in the sector, we incurred significant startup costs, but given the size of our operation, you can now see the benefit of our work, and we expect to be more pronounced going forward, finding the equilibrium between making sure our balance sheet stays strong and delivering profitability. And I believe there will be significant growth opportunities in the next year and a half, and we are readying for those moments. I would encourage you to review our financial statements. And within that, you can see the rigor of our work. We are operators who we re who review our costs carefully. As I said, we move forward with database decisions, and we believe that building this industry is brick by brick with the future Lululemon of weed being built today. It is built by operators who assess opportunities take calculated risks and consistently deliver. The Brown foundations have been laid, which means that we can capitalize on this growth. So why do we believe that we will continue to grow our business? The market is growing. This chart is um, the, where the, the, the three month average growth um, looking back. And we expect that the market, the legal market, which is four and a half billion in 22 is gonna grow 10 to 15% this year and higher rates within premium, the market will be over 5 billion by the end of this year. More importantly for Rubicon, the current trends and data indicate over the next three years, the premium market will grow over 300 million. Now, I'm sure you are all aware of the negative headlines for many cannabis companies in Canada who are struggling to operate in the current environment. And I've, I've said, you know, the legal cannabis industry is four and a half billion in 22 growing. The illicit market still holds an estimated 40 to 50% of the total market. And the general view is that pricing in the current cannabis market has hit its floor. And we've started to see the value players take back price but there still remains an excess of low quality production and low quality uncompetitive capacity in the market. This leaves many Canadian cannabis companies and LPs in a tough spot. A large portion of LPs have failed to execute on their business plan are over and over levered themselves with too high a fixed cost base. In addition, over an estimated 70% of licensed producers have unpaid to excise tax, and the CRA is beginning to come calling for that excise remittance. We expect there will continue to be CCAAs and bankruptcies in the sector through 23. So for Rubicon, the dichotomy of a growing market offset by companies and market share failing means opportunity. Not only will there be more shelf space to win with our brand recognition, execution, and balance sheet, we are in a position to be choosy on how we move forward, and we will not let that growth opportunity pass us by. So how do we grow our business with a single capacity constrained asset? Firstly, with organic growth. We are maximizing our yield and quality from the Delta facility with installation of tables and the remaining 50% of the facility that lacks them. This will increase air circulation in space, meaning better health, plant quality, terpene and terpene levels. We will target the most profitable products to sell for the highest return on our fixed cost base. And we're also looking to grow the overall premium segment where we only currently sell about a third of our product is simply Barragonic, our most profitable strains. And we expect to, to increase that in the coming years. Secondly, we leverage the power of our premium brands. In order to do this, we are applying external capacity to our business through A, our manufacturing relationships, such as our newly launched live rolls and edibles, two flavors launched and three more coming to stores near you next month and extension opportunities for our wildflower brand. But secondly, through targeted and trusted contract grow relations to fill the demand for our brands where appropriate, broadly an asset-like approach. 
This means we'll taking advantage of knowledgeable cultivators who are not looking for the complexity of building sales and marketing teams, but just want to grow great weed. With over a thousand LPs in Canada, we have a lot of choice and solid cultivators do exist looking for an outlet like ours. Lastly, we will be opportunistic as and when the right opportunities arise for our business to grow. As you will see in our guidance, with cash flow positive year, we are in an opportunistic position and we see a growing marketplace and demand for our love brands offset by assets in the marketplace getting cheaper by the day. I am very clear that I would prefer to bring into Rubicon a great, great operating business that is, that is delivering at a fair price to grow our business strengths or distressed asset that our team can make work for pennies on the dollar. This is a time for operators to take over the cannabis industry, not financiers. And oper as operators, we believe we are positioned to build a great BC weed company and taking BC bud to the world. Few companies in the sector are positioned financially, such as Rubicon Organics. With our premium market position, balance sheet, and positive trajectory, we expect to deliver continued growth and net revenue, resulting in an increase in gross profit and adjusted EBITDA for the full year 23. And one caveat I will mention is up being opportunistic on our cash if there's the right opportunity. So what you can see here is Rubicon has delivered. We have a steady stream of milestones in hitting operating cash flow and adjusted EBITDA positive in 22 and having 1964 go from a standing start to in 22 to the number one premium brand in April of 23. You can see there's a, there's a lot more yet to go in terms of our plans as well. So who are the building people building this premium can, Canadian premium cannabis company? Well, the women seem to be getting it done around here and I'm proud to work with this exec team where four out of the five are women. And it is all about people. This is just a snapshot of Rubicon and our senior leadership team and the people and strength we have. In the spring, we announced our new proposed board members and the onboarding process is underway. We have brought expertise and experience to our board of brand managers, manufacturers, government relations, strategists, and governance experts. We plan to hold our AGM in September, where we expect our board observers will be successful in their nominations. And our comp committee is currently seeking third-party input for appropriate compensation for our board members and we C-suite to stay in line with appropriate comparators. We like to do things right. The board has decided the CEO role will be determined once the new board is fully onboarded and has time to do the process right. And I have a high degree in confidence that the board is taking the right steps for Rubicon. For the time being, I will continue as interim CEO and CFO and the existing leadership team continues with the strategy and is focused on the next milestones. So Rubicon has an extremely tight float, high alignment from our management and insiders, holding over 43% of the common shares. And you'll see that our insiders continue to support the company online from a steady stream of support. From an investment perspective, every CEO tells you their company is undervalued. And I'm not going to be any different because we are currently trading below 1 times 22 revenue, delivering profitability in a quickly growing market. I believe with our tight flow, insider support and profile, there is an compelling investment case given the foundation and growth that we have in our business. So here's a little bit of fun and a bit of a sneak peek before I take questions. You can see some of our 2023 drops. We've got Scott under both all under Simply Bear. Um, Cleopatra Flower is in market, but Scotty, Biscotti and Jelly Breath have not yet launched. Um, so uh, it's always fun to see the beauty of the plants that we grow. Thumb up. I'd like to thank uh, Andrew and Ashlon for the invite. Winners of Canadian Canvas, confident we'll live up to that name and are living up to that name, and that the operating execution and our growth strategy has set the table for more success to come in the profitable premium market. So thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, Margaret, and very well presented. Really appreciate that. Uh, so we'll open to Q and A here because uh, we're just a little tight on time. So I'll, sorry, I'll apologies. I went long. No, no worries at all. Uh, and a uh, reminder to the audience, you're welcome to ask a question in the Q&A function of the Zoom webinar. Uh, I'll kick things off here with the first question. Um, and, and, and that's really on what we're, the difference from what we're hearing from, uh, let's say, other licensed producers, both in Canada and the US, uh, which are often talking to the surge in demand for value brands, and what we're actually seeing, you know, play out in the data and play out in Rubicon's results, which is the premium market's actually holding up quite well. Uh, consumers continue to look for premium products, uh, and there is a role for ultra premium products to play in the market. So, 
What what do you think explains this kind of dichotomy what, that we're seeing the, the strong performance, continued performance of premium products in markets? And what explains Rubicon's outperformance even relative to premium as, uh, as a category overall? Look, I think there's two big trends we've seen in premium. One is quality. You can't just say you're entering the premium market. A lot of people have tried to do that, and I won't name names, but we've seen it happen a lot. Every large LP, the, the largest of LPs, not every large LP, I should say, has, has suggested a, a premium strategy. You need to be focused on it, live it, and breathe it with every part of your business, and your product quality needs to actually be premium. That being said, the other big part of it is genetics and having new news with drops, you know, very similar to the cookie strategy. We are constantly looking for new news, dropping new and interesting products that the market is looking for and delivering them clearly and well. Great. Uh, and then a second question for myself. Um, obviously, the, the Brightfield Award was quite notable uh, yeah. of the top three brands to belong to Rubicon and and there's hundreds of brands in market, so quite the accomplishment. Um, yeah, we were really pleased to see it. We did not know about that study. That it was obviously a third-party study. Great, great. So, so, so that begs the question, um, especially in a market with restrictive advertising. How, how did you build a brand and build that awareness in Canada? And what was the strategy behind building a premium brand? Well, I can't give it all away. Um, uh, Mel, our chief commercial officer, would would shoot me. But we have our own sales team that are focused on what we do. Um, we, we, when we do something, we focus on doing it well. We are not trying to do everything. We're trying to do what we do well. One of the, the things that's been interesting coming out of that Brightfield study, I think we, we just launched our live rosin edibles, um, which are a slightly differentiated product in the market. Um, live rosin comes from a whole flower extraction, which gives a more full bodied experience. And, um, and most people are using, you know, cheap distillate into their, into their gummies. So the experience is quite different. When we do something, we want to focus on how we can differentiate, speak to our consumer and speak to the, speak to the brand. And we're very focused on that. Great. And, and we do have a question from the audience here. Yeah. Um, and the question is with regards to your expectation for potential legislative reform, including on on items such as excise tax, advertising restrictions, and, and the issues these have uh, potentially posed. Um, and maybe I'll even broaden that and say, um, you know, what's your expectation on reform? And in the absence of reform, do you still think you, that you could grow uh, to, to what we've seen in the past? Great question. Um, there will eventually be reform. I think it will take a minute for government to make that reform. I think the low hanging fruit is some of the regulatory items. I do expect that there'll be a change in the edibles category initially um, in terms of allowing more um, THC per unit. I think um, marketing and advertising is great because what we actually need to get away from is this THC story. That that's the only metric in Canadian cannabis. You don't walk into an alcohol store and say, what is the highest percentage of, of, of alcohol um, that I can get? And I'm sure Bina will, will speak to the same point in a bit. Um, look, we think that the full body being, we, what we'd like to do is speak to the characteristics of the individual items. And I think that that's because of the issues that have happened in market with THC testing, I believe that got the government is actually open to that. Understanding the effects why our, our blue dream that comes in at a 21% THC hits and feels more wonderful than a whole bunch of um, products that, that say they're 28% um, percent because of the full body terpene rich experience that you're getting out of it. Great. And maybe we have time to sneak in one more and and this would be more of kind of a blue sky opportunity. Um, where do you think the premium market as a category goes from here? How large can we get? What would be your total addressable market opportunity? And as you continue to take share, what would Rubicon's, what would you target as Rubicon's uh, share of, of that premium market? Well, I'd like to hold the same share we've got as with the growing market. That would be pretty nice. And that math 
would put us at a hundred million revenue target. Now I've got to get the biomass to do that. And then we are actively working on that, as I mentioned, in an asset light approach with great cultivators that are out there. Look, if the brands have the brand recognition and they continue to have quality in them, I think the sky's the limit um, in terms of where you can go, but we're going to do it with um, data with one foot in front of the other, not getting over our skis, because I truly believe that the great future Canadian cannabis companies are in this group that are presenting today and will be the the, the future large, uh, large companies of Canada. Great, very well said. Well, thank you very much, Margaret, for joining thank us you. today. Great job with the presentation and enjoyed having you.